All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, let's look at the TEAP's objective for today. Today, we're going to develop drafts by choosing an appropriate organizational strategy and voting on ideas to create a focused, organized, and coherent piece of writing. I know that you are really nervous about writing a short story over the next six weeks, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And like I said over the last few days, I'm going to be walking you through the process. The language objective is to use verbal, pictorial, and written language to develop a story. So, like I mentioned, a lot of you are, are somewhat nervous about using a, um, or, or writing a short story. <coughs> and I wanted to provide you with an example today to show you that, yes, you can do it because you're older. And I actually found a video on YouTube of a six-year-old who wrote a complete story. Um, and so we're going to analyze that story that this six-year-old six wrote. And it's animated by the Scholastic channel on YouTube. And I want you all to take a sheet of paper. You can use, this is not for a grade, but it is uh, something that you can use to take notes while you're watching the video. And keep in mind that the video is two minutes long, so it's not long at all. Again, it was a short story written by a, a, a six-year-old. Anyways, what we want to do is look at this and, and you can use this for notes. And you can just jot down while you're watching the video. If you notice what the setting is in the story, just jot that down. It, uh, what characters are in the story, jot that down. Who is the main character? Who is the person that we're rooting for in the story? What problems does the main character face? In other words, what challenges does he face? What elements of rising action does the story have? And if you remember what rising action is, that is the, the events in the story that are leading up to the climax. And what is the climax? That is all the events that have led up to this huge, uh, just the highest suspense in the story. Uh, so we're looking for the climax in this story, and then also what is the solution? After the climax happens, we find that there is falling action in the story, and so we want to identify in this video what is happening after the climax of the story, how is the story ending and bringing closure to the audience. So let's look at this video, and uh, Hope you enjoy it. Can a six year old write a complete story? The Knight's Quest by Scotty, six year old, three months. Mm -hmm. Did you all like that video? Yeah. Mm -hmm. did, the six, yeah. did the six year old do the animation himself as well? Uh, I, would assume, I would assume he maybe drew the pictures. Mm. Uh, I don't have the answer to that. I'm assuming he drew the pictures and then the Scholastic channel came along and That's animated it, brought animation to it. Um, they obviously left the spelling into the video of how the kids spelled the words. I like that. Um, yeah, it was good. So. Um, <clears throat> what is the uh, what is the setting that you notice for the story? It's an ancient kingdom. In the ancient kingdom, 
that would be the uh, time and place because there was medieval times probably and then the, the, the place that it happened in was a kingdom, a king's kingdom. What characters are in the story? We have the king, the knight, and the dragon. The king, the knight, and the dragon. That's exactly right. And who is the main character? The knight. The knight. The knight. What problems does the main character face? Kill a dragon. dragon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A fire breathing. <laughs> uh, what is the climax of the story? Killing a dragon. Killing the dragon. That's right. The fight scene. The fight. The battle. The epic battle between the uh, the the knight and the dragon. Is what that is the, this? Is that the rising action? Oh, did I skip that question? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That was the that was the climax. Was I must have skipped a question. Thanks for pointing that out. What are, what elements of rising action actually bring about the battle between the knight and the dragon? The king asked him to go battle the dragon. The king asked him to go battle a dragon, and then it also specifically says the knight set out on his quest. So that would also be an element of rising action. And then we already covered what is the climax of the story when the when the knight battles the dragon. What is the solution for the story? Killing the dragon. Killing the dragon? What else could be a possible solution? He got a bag of gold. He recovered the king's gold. And what, he got a reward. Yeah, he took he took the gold back to the king, and then the king paid him. And so everyone is everyone in the story was happy, right? Except, Except the, the dragon. dragon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <clears throat> all right. So what I want us to look at is first of all, let me ask you a question. Do you think that you can write a short story yourself over the next six weeks if I help you? Yes. Yeah. Now that you've seen a six-year-old can do it. Do you have a little more confidence that you can do it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, okay, so we want to use a flow map today. Like in our teach objective, it does mention choosing an appropriate organizational strategy. I went ahead and chose for you today to learn how to use a flow map to outline your story and the events that are going to happen in your story. So a few things that we want to go over is the fact that a flow map shows the sequence of events in your story. And do you, can you all see that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. A flow map shows the sequence of events in your story. Like I just mentioned, it's basically a chart uh, that helps you outline everything that is happening in your story. Each box in a flow map represents a new development in the story. Each box can represent a new paragraph or chapter. And the reason why I included chapter, because some of you might be thinking, oh, i got to write chapters and stuff. Well. This would be in the case of a, a distinguished author who, who does this for a living, where they are a professional author and they write published novels. Um, in our case, it might be a new paragraph in your short story. Each box consists of simple ideas, not yet in sentence form. Details are forms later. In other words, what this means is, is we're going we're gonna to look at different parts of our story and we're going to jot notes down, and then we're going to square, draw a square around the story elements that we're looking at today, and then we're going to draw arrow, arrows linking them together so that we can see this movement in the story is happening. We're going to put a box around it. We're going to we're going to draw an arrow to this box over here that has these elements of the story to show that it's moving along and it's progressing to the climax and the solution. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're using elements of story in, the, uh, <clears throat> in our flow map. And keep in mind that when you're using a flow map, you're not having to write everything out. Don't worry about writing in complete sentence form. I don't want you to do that. I'm giving you permission to write <laughs> in fragments, OK? Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to use this to jot out your notes for the story, your ideas. You remember how yesterday I had you complete a quick list. We brainstormed over ideas of what we can write about, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to be jotting down more ideas that you have. And whenever you jot an idea down for the setting, just jot down the time and the place and any possible characters. Draw a box around it. Then draw another arrow to the problem. What problems do your main uh, characters face? And also keep in mind that uh, for, for this context of how we're using it, you can go ahead and put your characters into the setting box, uh, but keep in mind you might not introduce another character 
until you encounter the problem, right? Or you might not have a character show up until rising action. But go ahead and for this context, you can jot all the characters down in here. Do you got that? Okay. Got it? Okay, good. So rising action, we already discussed it. It's where the, uh, the, uh, the events that are leading you to the climax of the story. It's what's sustaining you in the story and, and, and giving you interest in continuing to read it. Okay? The climax is the, what the rising action leads to. It's the highest amount of suspense in the story. And then finally we get to the solution in which the story is now uh, coming to a close. The, the writer is bringing closure to the audience so that they think, okay, now everyone's living happily ever after. Or um, some people are, yes, like the dragon in the previous story, they're not living happily ever after, but there is closure to the story so that people aren't left feeling hanging. Uh, so what I want you to do is I'm going to leave this up here for you on the board while you work in groups so that you can use this for notes so that you can make your own flow map from a group. And you remember um, how I chose yesterday, we, we used the quick list to draw on our experiences and our likes and our dislikes and hobbies to brainstorm what we wrote about. Well, you remember how I chose to um, write about a hunter that goes on his first big hunting trip to the mountains of eastern Arizona. And he encounters dangerous, dangerous situations along the way. Because you remember, I'm a hunter, and so that's one of my passions, is to be outdoors, right? So, and my wife and I had also taken our, our, our a vacation to the mountains of eastern Arizona, so that's a place that I have experience with, right? And y'all also do the same thing with your quick list. So, real quick, let's model out um, taking my story that I, I shared with you, uh, or my idea for writing a story, and let's model out real quick uh, this flow map before you work in groups. So the setting, <clears throat> what do you think the setting would be for my story? The, uh, Eastern Arizona. Eastern mountains, right? Arizona. Any characters? You, and you. Hunter. you and your the wife. hunter. And the hunted. True. All right. We don't have a time yet, but that's okay. We can come back back to that later because this is development. So what what problems might we face in this story? A Whether poisonous snake or something. A bugs. poisonous snake. Yeah, bugs. What I was thinking of. Sorry about spelling right there. Uh, what I was thinking of is what happens if the hunter comes along with someone else who is pursuing him and bringing danger to him. So I thought, okay, so another hunter pursues him. That would be a problem, right? Mm -hmm. And then rising action, uh, those would be the events that can lead up to the climax, such as a snowstorm, <coughs> right? Because you're in the mountains, that's one idea. Uh, another idea could be an avalanche. Could be a fire if it's, if it's the wrong time of year. That's true, a uh, fire. And then a climax. Oops, sorry, I just messed up for you. I started to draw the box first. Uh, the climax would be, uh, let's say, if he's being pursued by another hunter, maybe the climax would be him having to confront the hunter, right? The confrontation. Confrontation. And then, here's something that I wanted to point out to you, is that if you have filled out the, the, um, the flow map up here just like this, and you ran it you're running out of room over here, take your arrow and draw it over here back to your left side of your paper and start right here. Just like you're writing a paper when you're writing and you go to the next line at the left side, that's exactly what you want to do. Instead of starting over here on this side of the paper, you want to start over there. Okay? 
So our solution would be the hunter gets to go home, right? Or he's rescued. He wins the battle. Wins the battle. All right, so I'm going to leave this up here for you. And what I want to do is have uh, each one of you just send one person from your groups to come up to the front, get one piece of poster board and a marker, and then choose a person in your group to write your ideas down. You're going to take uh, my idea for the story, and you're going to take this idea. Just stick with the synopsis, and I'll also have it up here for you. Uh, but stick with the synopsis of the story and come up with your own with your own problem for the hunter, your own rising action climax, and then we're going to collaborate as a group in just a minute after you're finished with your group work. So if you'll go ahead and do that, send one person to the front, get a marker, and go to So does everyone have their story outlined? All right, so can I get a volunteer to come to the board and write down? Colin's coming up. Alright. So Colin, if you'll take a marker. And you don't need your poster board, you don't have your group call out. I'm just having you. Oh, here. Uh, what I want you to do is we're going to collaborate all of this together as a class, what we came up with. So we're going to start out, what do we start out with? The setting, right? The setting. And you remember we don't, we'll draw in our boxes after we have the setting, right? There you go. All right, so what settings did y'all come up with? Arizona. Arizona. Mountains. Dry in the summertime. Dry summertime. All right, and then what is next? What comes after setting? Problem. Problem. All right, so draw your box. Draw your box around here. There you go. Go ahead and erase that second box. Because you want to be sure to leave yourself room because it's 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 note taking for you. And then draw the arrow. Remember. Uh yeah, put a character in there. Who's the character? The hunter in this box? For setting. There we go. Alright, so the second box we're gonna be working on. Uh, what problems? Come up with. Getting off work. Getting off work. Mountain That's a big lion. one, right? What did you say, Randy? Mountain lion. Mount, so lion. Getting chased by Bigfoot. Bigfoot. <laughs> Those are all pretty good problems. <laughs> forgot my arrows. All right. <laughs> forgot equipment. Uh, so what is the next? What is the next section that we want to be thinking about? Rising action. Rising action. There you go. Good job, Colin. What what elements of rising action would you think of? Chased by a lion. Chased by a lion. Or Bigfoot. Or Bigfoot. <laughs> or proving Bigfoot is real, right? <laughs> he breaks his wrist. He breaks his wrist. Cornered on the edge of the cliff. Cornered on the edge of the cliff. Having to confront your boss. About getting off work. Getting off work. That can be scary for some employees. Mm -hmm. All right, so what, uh, go draw a box around that, Colin. Those are some great ideas. And then what happens after rising action? Climax. What climax did any group come up with? The lion jumps on it. The lion jumps on him. So now he's having to battle the lion, right? Yes. Right. Get the epic showdown of uh, Bigfoot. Bigfoot versus the A showdown between the hunter and Bigfoot. It's only one poison arrow left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he has to choose. So you have with, more action. See, you are coming up with some pretty good ideas. But if you, you have also, beef jerky, he'll come right up to you. And do you, <laughs> that's right. do you notice? Do you notice what you are doing too with uh, with your story? Is you're also incorpor incorporating humor into your story as well? Because for a suspenseful, you know how you watch a suspenseful movie, right? And it still has elements of humor. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing right here. So you're incorporating humor, humor, and different elements that are going to draw the reader's attention. All right. And so the last one is solution. So what solution did y'all come up with? 
Gives the lion a hug. Gives the lion a hug. What about Bigfoot? Gives Bigfoot oh, a hug. No, he Big kills hug. Bigfoot. And then he's rescued and then he gets money because he found Bigfoot. You have to skin Ooh, yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. And then he doesn't have to go back to work. We right. took the lion home <laughs> as a pet because the lion actually was a nice lion. And named it Karen and it rode in our race car. So while Colin is finishing up writing the solution, I'm going to go and pass out your homework. And uh, I want you to take this and I want you to take your story ideas that you came up with. In, uh, and tonight I want you to... Our brainstorming ideas from yesterday or this story for today? Uh, not this story. This I was just using for you all to model how we're going to do this. Um, so you're taking your own story that you brainstormed yesterday. You remember how last night for your homework you wrote a paragraph synopsis over the story that you want to write. You're going to take this home tonight. See, it shows you the how to do a flow map. You're going to take this home tonight and take your story and create a flow map so you can start outlining your story. If we did this and we now have some new ideas, can we totally redo what we, what That's we did yesterday? Fine, because you're still in the planning phase. That is totally great. Anyone else? Everyone good? All right, I'll see you all tomorrow morning.